Would you please stand and salute the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Welcome to the meeting. The, uh, there are no minutes to approve. So the next thing is department reports and Dan, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, we are we started this week hauling winter sand. Um, we'll obviously, continue until we get all we need. We ordered 2,600 yards this year. Um, that's going well. Continuing to get uh, some trucks circled out for or cycled out for inspections and repairs. Um, and everything's going well there. Um, one thing that uh, I apologize, Justin wanted me to bring up just to, so you guys were aware of it. Um, under the appropriation from the from the uh, budget for this year, we appropriated one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars for the purchase of uh, a new uh, one-ton dump truck, which we then. Um, Changed around so that um, I ended up purchasing a used one ton dump truck. That figure was $65,000, which left a remaining $60,000 on that line. And the intent and was discussed briefly was that we would be looking for a uh, used um, sidewalk machine. They call it a trackless machine. Um, we've been looking for a while. We finally found one. Um, that's what we need. Uh, the Unit with the attachments comes to sixty thousand dollars even. It was you know, I worked with the company to meet my number, um, and they have. Um, so um, ready to go ahead with that. I have the quote. Um, Justin signed it, but he wanted me to bring it to your attention to kind of make sure you were all okay with that proceeding. Um, this is a used machine. It's been checked. It's good. Um, the machine itself sells new for $160,000. Um, we are getting the machine used for uh, $20,000, which um, there's a used market for them, but it's a machine that it holds value but only to a point. Uh, this machine has is, is gone, gone through by the uh, by HP Fairfield. They're the ones that sold originally. It's a good unit. It has higher hours, but it's not out of the realm of, of still having a lot of usability for us for, for years to come. Um, so I think it's a good deal. I think it solves our sidewalk machine issue with using the current machine we have as a Ben track, um, which just isn't heavy duty enough to handle what we do with it. Um, it's plagued us with issues and breakdowns and uh, this will be much more suited to what we have now for sidewalks and what we are planning in the future. Did you share with us the quote? Yeah. As it, as it yeah sir. And do you need a do you need a motion for that or is this just a FYI? Justin wasn't specific with it. Just because of the amount I wanted to use to, to uh so it's there. It's already been approved, but I'll leave that to your decision on whether you wanted to get the motion to do it. I think that's the back to the original. Yes. So the original funding was approved by voters by the truck. Um, but do we have the the leeway to say, well, we only spent half of it on the truck, so we're gonna spend half on something else? It was it was amended before the vote. The, the the wording was not just for a truck. Justin amended the the wording because I told him we're not going to find a new truck, and we're not going to find it for that price. So maybe let's look for some used equipment. And if I'm able to find a used truck that leaves us enough money, I can finally I can replace this sidewalk machine that's inadequate with something that'll get us. To the next step so that's so in the public works budget it was 
It was that was the intent it was put out there. I don't know how specific the wording was, but the intent was that it could be the money could be used in this way. So, I, think, I, just, I think we should really make sure before we vote to do it, because um, that, that has been a, a very sticky point with a lot of people is um, funds being shuffled from one place to another and um, the town spending money um, on things that weren't approved. I, I think I think you're right. We changed that. So let me see if I can find the warrant. I'll play around, see if I can find the warrant and we'll look at that. So if we need to give an answer, is time of the end essence getting back to them or is oh, they're holding it for oh, okay. Um I you know we had to wait two weeks and maybe Yeah, and what was the original asking for? I was seeing an attachments, it was 61,642 for everything. And I went back then and said, I have 60,000 to spend, period. You have some legal room and it came back with 60,000 black. So not much off when we're talking that kind of money, but you know. That's the what we voted on in front of me, I just need to find that specific article. So. Well, she's finding that article. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, Presley Road's looking good. Yes. I was down there today. Right in there. <laughs> and the uh, folks who live down there are very pleased. All right. So, Article 21 shall the town. Shall the town will vote to authorize the issuance of up to 125,000 in general obligation bonds or notes of the town for the purpose of financing the purchase of a used 110 plow truck and a used sidewalk plow for the public works department. It's all right there. So we're good. Yep. Perfect. Computers. Sometimes they are helpful. <laughs> when they work. When, when they work or when the person knows how to work them. So can you tell us about the paving schedule for the rest of what we want to get done? Just it's annual budget. It's not looking good to get done this year. I think we're going to get pushed into the spring like we did last year. Um, if the fall weather cooperates, we'll be okay. But if you said you asked me to answer you today, I'd say probably not going to happen. Um, but I'm very hopeful. But it's it's day by day, week by week. Where we got the bids and we the acceptance of his bid, I you know, got it in as quick as I could with our process and our dates and our votes. Um, but the jobs he had accepted before us are just taking longer, delayed, um, you know, short on labor. So he's doing everything he can to get here. Um, but we're, we're running out of time. I'm not looking forward to having to deal with Sanborn Road and Blue Road in the winter again because they're going to crumble apart. But I also don't want pavement to go down that peels up in the spring. So the original deadline of the bid was October 15th for paving to be completed. Um, I don't see how that's going to happen at all. I told him I'm more than willing to extend it into late October, November, but only if temperatures um, cooperate, weather cooperates, and, and he feels confident that anything he lays down is going to stay. So. What's the sort of acceptable standard for temperature? Um, I'm not exactly sure. Temps we have right now at night, you know, down in the 40s and then warming up in the 60s is tolerable. The longer it continues, the less heat is retained in the road, less chance of getting a good adhesion. Um, that's why I say we got to kind of hope for a Indian summer here for a bit. I think what DOTs cut off for that type of thing is November 15th, what I recall. So yeah, the bathing plants will stay open until after Thanksgiving yeah. for all the all site projects everybody's working on and driveways, sidewalks and other things, but yeah, so 
Right now we're in a holding pattern. I'm very hopeful, but last thing I want to do is be in a meeting next spring where all the payments were up. You left and you're telling me to get out the door. So we'll, if we have to wait, we'll wait. At least we'll get a good product at that point. Cressy Road is. is... Cressy Road, yes. I, oh. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Cressy Road is well underway. They're over halfway done laying down the, the new base gravel. Um, they think they'll be done by tomorrow afternoon, possibly Friday morning at the latest. So um, that will that'll be nice for that road. Give it some base for, for a couple of years still. Hopefully, we can keep it up. Good. And the same company is doing Comston Hall, maybe? The, the company that's doing Crefty Road is the same company doing Comston Hall parking lot. Um, I've been in touch with them weekly. They're in the same boat. They're, they hope to get it done, but might not. We have a little more leeway on a parking lot with pavement than we do on a road. So it, might, it might get done, but it might get pushed till spring. They're certainly aware of my stance and what I'd like to happen, but we have to make the best decision in the end for, for longevity. So, okay. Anything? I, the only question I came up with in regards to um, stickers for the transfer station is um, people that rent property, so they're not, you know getting them in their tax bills because they are not getting a tax bill. Yep. So what's your plan for? Just like a permit now, they just need to go to the They have to office. go to the town office and, and show. Get a permit. Yes, yeah. exactly. And then I, one of the things that I ran by Justin is what if on the back of the tax bill was printed, the only problem with this, is if you get multiple have multiple pieces of property in your name, you'd get multiple checkoff things. So that was the the only other. And then again, that leaves out the renters. They still have to go and pick up, you know, a checkoff or that. So those were the only questions I had. Kind of toying with how people would get that. And just throw us on this record. We I thought tonight we would be making a final decision on what we're going to do with transfer station stickers and all that, but it's not officially on the agenda. So I think we should put it on the agenda two weeks out so that people know it's there. And if they have additional thoughts, they can express them then. I did have a couple residents email me after our last meeting with thoughts and suggestions, um, which was great. We, we talked back and forth and know thought about it so but but nothing yeah. nothing uh shining came out that was like oh this is definitely the way you can do it yeah. so uh one thought that came my way it might be the same group of people in your orbit <laughs> um was to put stickers to use to continue to allow a certain amount of free disposal for uh, folks based on their automobile registration. And if they would like a free item that we, we use the back of their registration as the chief originally had suggested um, and just put a sticker on it. Apparently, it's it's not appropriate to deface the back of a re, uh, registration with writing, but if you simply just put a sticker on it, and then if someone has a problem presenting their registration because they're concerned about privacy issues, then they don't have to, right? They can just pay. And if someone has a problem with that, then I would say, look, the office staff has to look at your registration in order to fill out a card. So we're really not, town officials are always going to have to look at your registration in order to verify that you're a resident. Uh, but we're sensitive to the fact that someone might be concerned about the 
privacy issue of whatever data might be on the front side of their registration. And so uh, if they would like free stuff, they simply need to present the back side of their registration and get a sticker. The, the employee can look to see if there are any other stickers on the back side. And it's a coded sticker that's something special that only the employees have access to. And it's a fairly simple thing for people to do. And we can continue with the status quo and not have to suspend the free stuff that people are enjoying, which by the way, I think is a good idea. Because otherwise you're gonna find piles of stuff left by the road because people are gonna be frustrated that we're, we essentially raise their taxes by insisting that they pay for everything. So, did, you, did you say you were going to put the one of the ideas put the checklist on the back of your property tax bill? Well, that was just an idea that ran through my head because they would be so you'd have to carry your tax bill around. Well, I mean, it was just an idea that you got a you were getting that sticker with your um tax bill. So, but then for people that own like yourselves that own multiple pieces of property, you could take. 30 tires, you know, foreseeably, if you, if you, um, you know, because you, so that was not a, a great idea. I mean, I had an idea. It was not a good idea. I was worried about the tenants. We take care of the tenants, so. Oh, I know. But I mean, there's other people that might rent a house and they're rented from somebody in Timbuktu and they're not, you know, that person's not coming to take care of the trash for them. So they need to get yeah, it. The tenant has like, they have tires. They, they give us the card. We take the tires. They yes. Sell. They still have to go get stickers. Exactly. They're not going to have their, it's not going to be on the back of their registration. They're not going to give me their registration or their whatever to take their tires to the dump, the transfer station. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a, you know, that's a conundrum for us because we have apartment buildings. Yes. So um, we do, you know, we do take care of the dump. Yeah. So. Yeah. The Department of Unwanted Material Possession. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't use their present system. I, I don't understand what, it what we're coming up with. Is so the, the, similar to the present. It's very similar to the present system, but we've heard numerous objections to people being asked for their paperwork. And lots it and takes a of, lot of time for the right. staff to go over and have to get it out of the have the people get it out of their cars. Whereas right. if there's a sticker either on the windshield or on a piece of plexiglass on your dashboard, they'll easily be able to see it. And it's non-invasive. And exactly. And it doesn't feel like we're getting the into people's police, business. As we always called it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's why, because there were, a, you know, just a rehash of business. There were, there were people dumping things that they were not residents of yeah, Monmouth right. or Wales. And there was, we were, care, you know, carrying that burden. So there had to be some way to, you know, we had the, the cardboard index cards, you know, a way to determine who. They think they don't want to show the card they paid. They paid exactly. They paid, so. But to be continued, right? Yes. <laughs> so, so, so I think so. Yeah. Chief. All right. I'd love to go over this one of our busiest months of the year. Um, today I had uh, a great opportunity to go up to the high school, Monmouth Academy, and Spent two and a half hours at the library, just kind of being present, uh, able to answer questions for uh, any student interested in joining our junior fire department. Um, I had junior captain Ian Fournier and James Parity join me, and they helped field the questions. And we had several several students stop by that expressed interest. Uh, we have one definite lives up on the Cresty Road, so James Parity's up there, so that works out good. Um, so we're five juniors. Eventually, you got the six come next week, and we got a few more sparks of interest. So we'll see what happens. Um, 
This Saturday is our fall harvest sale. Uh, it's going to be up at uh, Highmore Farm, also off the Cretsey Road. So I'm glad that Cretsey Road is getting fixed up. It'll be good. Um, we'll be at the entrance off Cretsey Road. So if you want to come get some pumpkins, apples, uh, we'll have a bake sale, uh, pies and muffins, other cookies and whatnot to sell. And then it's money raised uh, goes towards our Richard P. Milligan Scholarship Fund. And that's going to be from 10 to 2 this Saturday. Um, next Tuesday is our fire prevent, well, for all fire prevention, we get it all next week. Uh, but Tuesday, the 11th, uh, we have students pre K through second grade that will be coming down to the fire station this year. Last year, we went up to the school. Uh, this year, they're going to be uh, bussing the little kids, and then uh, the older kids will walk at weather permits. And um, Spend a full day at the firehouse. Uh, got fire safety messages, friendly firefighter presentation. Our smoke trailer will be there. Our, our new one that we acquired last year. Uh, so we'll get to have kids crawl low under smoke and all that stuff. Um, spray water, whatever. Uh, this year we're doing smaller class, well, smaller, um, less classes. So there'll be five classes, but they're going to be longer duration. So they combine a couple of it's usually like 150 kids now they come through the doors. And I didn't get a chance to extend the invitation either. I'm sure you're really welcome to have a cruise to come by and join us. We'll make one, we'll make one for you. Um, we usually start the first class right around 8.15. Um, then part of our fire prevention week activities, we'll be doing a coloring contest with kids. Uh, we usually do up, upwards of grade three, and um, we do rides in school on our fire truck for the big day. And we'll be doing that on Friday, the 21st, at 6 30 and 8 o'clock. So we usually take two trucks, we have up, upwards of 12 kids uh, between the two trucks. Again, that's always a big hit. Good PR, parents love it. Um, October 15th, coming right up, is going to be our sparkly breakfast open house at the fire station from 7 to 10. So, see you guys there. Uh, had to go up a little bit in price this year, an extra buck. So, we told, uh, $10 for adults, $5 for children. Don't fool me to this, but I think under, under the age of 12. And I'll report this in two weeks, but I'll just announce it now. Halloween is going to be on a Monday, October 31st. We do our event from 4 to 8 p.m. So we'll be selling burgers and hot dogs that evening. So I'm hungry. We usually average about 600 kids for that event. Uh, training this past week, uh, we did vehicle electrification training, and in a couple of weeks we'll be burning those vehicles. So I'll uh, be doing some live vehicle fires. Last thing I got is tonight, actually, is the first night of our Firefighter 1 and 2 program. I've uh, got one of our newest members and one of our junior members attending this year. That's a seven month training program, three attempts. So uh, we've got a few officers that will be assisting with the instruction of that course. And like I said, two, two members. That's all I have. Do you have any questions? I made you a copy because I had a lot of information. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hmm. Chief, can I ask you about um, smoke detectors? Yeah. Uh, I, do you have a program to encourage people to check them and to install them and that sort of? Well, we always encourage people to have them. Um, and we'll certainly go out and, and inspect one um, or help install one if somebody needed assistance. Um, we don't have like an active program where we're doing it on like, a consistent basis, but certainly upon request, we have. They recommend, I think it's every 10 years uh, to replace your, your detectors. Um, the newest ones now, you can buy the 10 year lithium battery. So it's kind of like you install, put a date on it, and just get about it for 10 years, um, which is kind of nice. But uh, certainly we, we recommend testing them once a month, you know, make sure that they work. And as far as installing them, the, there's a method to it, you know, as far as where they're supposed to go. You know, in the sleeping room or just outside the sleeping room on each level of the home, a certain distance from the ceiling, from the wall, uh, you put it 
it on the ceiling. Uh, so there's a lot to it, certainly. And compass with that carbon monoxide detectors. Now there's gas detectors. Certainly, yeah. if anybody from the public needs any assistance, they can call us and we have to help. It's part of the new building code anyway. You have to, they're hardwired in the new and building code. That's correct. So, so now, yeah, new construction, residential, uh, need hardwired with battery backup called AC DC power. And then get into some apartment buildings and some other code for that. Good question. Good evening. <laughs> um, I gave you a copy of the September report. In front of you there. Uh, September was a fairly busy month for our management on the force. Um, we had 11 arrests during the month of September. Five arrests for operating after suspension of our license. One arrest for violating a protection from use order. One arrest for operating under the influence. One arrest for criminal restraint, failure to submit to arrest and assault on an officer. One arrest for burglary and criminal mischief, and another arrest for domestic violence assault. So, uh, busy month. I want to make everybody aware that tomorrow, the uh, juniors from Monmouth Academy uh, have their day of caring. And what they are going to be doing tomorrow is. Uh, Policing the edges of the roads on Academy, Norris Hill, and Main Street. And what I mean by policing is they're going to be picking up garbage from the side of the road. Um, I'd like to thank them for uh, uh, the class for, for going above and beyond and doing that. On Friday morning, <clears throat> Officer Moore and with the boss with Delaney will be at the Academy, um, the alert training. Excuse me, the ALICE training. Again, ALICE is the acronym for Alert, Lockdown, Inform, Counter, and Evacuate. And they'll be training with the staff. They have, they have a staff uh, meeting that on Friday. They'll be spending two hours with them working with the uh, on ALICE stuff. RSU2 has committed to this program and is presently working with ALICE on Navigate 360 to train up all the educators within RSU52. Uh, RSU 2, 52 is the other side. Uh, RSU 2 for, uh, uh, for the Alice system. So uh, we're still working on the school safety plan, which is Alice is an important part of this safety plan to bring everybody together and, and so everybody knows what to expect in case of the crisis at one of the schools. Uh, our next step in the safety Plan is conducted tabletop exercise um, so we can test the theories and determine best practices going forward, what works, what doesn't work, what we have to improve on, and what we can just forget about. And again, I'd like to thank the superintendent and school administrators here in Monmouth for our working with us on the plan and sitting down at the table with us and, and uh, helping us through so everybody has a part in this. Their big thing is, you know, they, they understand the priority for the children in the community and keep them safe. And that's what this whole thing is all about. So, um, bad news, I 2016 4 broke down today and had to be towed to an automotive garage to determine what failed. Um, I just know it wasn't good because I was driving it when it failed. <laughs> 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 Did you say your registration was expired? <laughs> Tonight, I have brought our two newest cruisers, the 21 Dodge and the 22 Ford Explorer here. And I, I just wanted to make them available to you guys so I can explain to you um, and show you what we have all accomplished in, in the matter of a few months and, and upgrading and improving the equipment that we expect our officers to use. Uh, and this equipment is obviously designed to keep them safe and keep the community safe. Um, so I just wanted to present these two cars to you tonight so you can take a look at it, see what we've done, what we've accomplished, and an opportunity just to thank you for helping us bring the PD around into the 21st century. 
parking problem is being addressed. Okay. Um, Kirk went down there again today and, and, and met with the owners of the vehicles and it's being worked on. Trying to rectify that for the people in North Palm. Any questions? I have a, usually, uh, Go ahead, Doug. We get more than. I dropped the whole packet off with Lori, and she said she was going to make copies for you guys and put them in your box. That's why I just did the talk because when I gave her the packet, I didn't have all the statistics ready. So I thought you guys would have gotten the packet from the town office. So I apologize for that. That's my error. That's good. As long as I can use it. Yeah. Next time. We had um, overall, we had uh, 312 um, complaints in the month of September that we handled. Uh, bring up another another point on that. Part of that part of that package um, was breaking down the, the the complaints that we're having on Saturday and Sundays uh, during the day day shift, and that's the shift that we are having a difficult time filling. Um, just because we don't have the reserves anymore to do it. And that's the, the uh, area of concern that I wanted to bring to your attention because uh, since we the new record management system came online uh, on June 1st, Saturday day shifts, we've handled 83 complaints. Sunday day shifts, we've handled 66 complaints. And so we're, we're at a point now where we're... Uh, Really killing our overtime budget because these, these men and women are working hard to, you know, well above their 40 hours a week. I mean, I think Dana had 20, 30, 37. 37 hours overtime in the last pay period. That, I appreciate the work they're doing, filling these shifts and making sure they're getting covered, but um, there comes a point in time when the wife's a tough enough, you know, and these guys are working. Long hours and burning out. I don't want to see that happen to our crew. So this is an issue that we we we've got to look at. One of the areas um, I was looking at, and I'm going to get the budget figures back for year to date um, after this blast. Uh, warrant warrant gets sent through. Excuse me. After this next warrant gets sent through, so I know exactly where our, our overtime budget is and where our um, reserve budget is and see if there's actually any way we can put a fifth officer on and go to 12, 12 hour shift with a 24 hour coverage. Um, that's one of the things I'm looking at because trying to find reserves out there in today's environment is very difficult to do because number one, it, it's very demanding to find someone who is willing to give up their weekends to work a second job and commit to going through the training that they're required to go through to become a reserve officer. Um, so that's out on the table. I just wanted to let you know what direction I'm going in um, just to try to alleviate this, this issue because he's got men and women just can't keep, keep up doing the overtime, working the overtime that they're working just to make everybody aware. What happened to the guys who were doing the, uh, who were the reserves? We had one move on to Sabatis because um, it's guaranteed 35 hours a week, I think, yeah. at $25 an hour. Uh, another guy who uh, is no longer in law enforcement. Um, we have just uh, we had we had reserves that were working full time jobs in law enforcement in other communities, and it just we just couldn't get them to commit to working shifts because they're working this job anyway to come in for $15 an hour is just, they don't, just don't want to do it. So, uh, so we're down to one, one reserve right now and we're trying to hire another one who is had some academy experience. Uh, uh, we're doing a background, I'm doing a background on him right now, but we'll see where it goes from there. That'll bring us up to two, but you just don't have the, the personnel to cover those jobs. That's where we're at. And if we have enough money in the budget to start it, even 
in January or February and just do five months based on what we have in the, in the uh, reserve account and the overtime account. Is there any money left in the overtime account? So we just we just have to have a, a light at the end of the tunnel for these guys because I can't keep asking them to cover these shifts and and uh, the hours they're working. It's just too much. I want to make you guys aware that's where we're headed and give you a heads up. Any questions? I had one for Dana. You posted a picture the other day of one of the units that had been in a crash. Yes. And then the restored was that from years ago or? No, it was from January. Oh, that January. was in 2016 that I got into a wreck in Winthrop responding to a call. And then I posted the new, new cruiser and because we use the same license plate. And I said, oh, this is an old one, Chief. But uh, <laughs> here it is. Okay. But people started asking questions. Oh, my God, did you wreck the new one? It's still in service. It's just another one. Well, I had a couple of questions, and it's like I have not heard anything about any damage or it's like, but I will find out. So thank you. Chief, uh, off the top of your head, can you tell us? Uh, for the month of September, what portion of your interactions had to do with like general traffic issues? We didn't get a chance to see the details. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, I hate to do this off the top of my head, we had. Uh, Hundred and I think it was 125 traffic stops out of 300 and some odd. Yes, total. Yeah. Okay. And of those hundred, you said 125. Yes. Ish. So out of those, how many were actually citations? Um, we we run about probably right in the area of 10 percent. Pretty consistent. Sounds. Completely appropriate. Yeah, yeah and, and and I'll I'll tell you, um, getting the the reports from the men and women who work for me, um, there are a lot of things that are you know allowances that are giving you know you, you may have been stopped for for beating and there are three or four other violations they find and they don't go to the extent of. Writing four citations, they'll write one for the speed and one them for the other violations. Hats off to them using common sense. Well, just so you know, I mean, the, the calls that I get from constituents have to do with, they don't have to do with over enforcement, they have to do with speed. That's like the number one complaint is hey, they're 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 going too too fast on the Tilson Road or whatever road they happen to be walking on, and yeah. and so and, and a gentle it, reminder for people to slow down. And, and it's, it, it, it's, it's hard, and I, I get it. Um, we go where the most of the complaints are, and most of the complaints we're getting right now are, are, are Main Street. So we're concentrating on that. Sure. Getting the flow of traffic through Main Street slowed down. And we're in North Monmouth, so we go up and hit them for a while, and then we'll hit Sanborn or Tilson, you know, and just spot check them all. But you can't be there all the time, unfortunately. And no, that's fine. We do our best to be seen. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda is uh, Black Board reports. The only thing I have is you got here when it was daylight or was, have driven by here and you can see the, the delicate demo has started on the academy. So we're, we are seeing progress. I mean, one of the big hangups there is that Dickerson and O'Day, who is the Construction manager, they're having a hard time getting bids in from contractors because contractors are so busy and it's the nature of the business. So, but he's been working hard at that and they decided, well, we need to 
before we get the bids for the doors and windows and things, we need to start some demo well the weather's still decent and get it buttoned up. So that's progress we can see happening next door. So that's all the update I have on that. Well, I have a concern about personal property tax. Um, I, did, I talked to Donna, who's the appraiser. Apparently in March, they send out to businesses some kind of a statement that the owners are supposed to fill out and send back. And it seems to me that that is not being pursued very vigorously. And according to Donna, they, um, there are a number of programs that businesses can avail themselves of with the, uh, with the state. So if they pay personal property tax, the town of Monmouth, they can get reimbursed by the state. So I think we need to, we can't let these things um, slip under the rug. And uh, um, it's too bad because it would lower taxes for everyone here in town, particularly if the uh, businesses are able to get reimbursed through these various programs. I'm wondering if we can perhaps meet with Donna. She called it a uh, March letter, a gentle hint, um, maybe to make it a more, uh, more of a nudge than just a gentle hint and get businesses to report and do what they're supposed to do. I'd like to meet her. I've been on the board now for two and a half years or whatever it is, and I wouldn't know her if I fell over her on the sidewalk. Uh, <laughs> I've never seen her, never met her. So I think I'd like to, you know. She's been on really well. oh, I, think, I don't I think, think it's only twice a month. <laughs> Every other week. So, yeah. So I, yeah. but I've never, you know, I would like to have her tell us, you know, What's going on? And she could explain these programs exactly. to us. Yeah. I also know that uh, Reagan <coughs> LaRochelle has collected quite a lot of data on uh, businesses around town that Donna may not be aware of in terms of just the identity, the owner, contact information, uh, that type of stuff. That would be good. And especially if this is a, you know, a zero sum proposition for the business owner, like they can get reimbursed from the state by paying the town of Monmouth, then, um, then I think maybe that would be an appropriate use of that information. Speaking of Reagan, that reminded me of something. I left her a message about a week ago, um, and then I went in to see Justin about the same time um the lumber yard down on 202 former Knowles lumber um the main cabin masters down in manchester have expressed an interest in that property mm. um and it sounds like they're going to move forward with that um and i asked justin and, and left the message for reagan about we should try to put together some kind of a package for them um telling them what we can offer them for coming to Monmouth um with the tiff potentially adding that lot to the TIF um, tax breaks or something. Um, yeah, because that would be a-, a Have really, you heard back from her? I have not. Okay. But Justin was going to send her a text message that day, and I haven't talked to him since either, but- um, I didn't know Reagan reached out to them. Okay. So she has reached out. She just hasn't yeah. circled back to you to yeah. say, hey, we've reached out. Yep. So they're thinking okay. about moving there moving. from that tiny spot that they can't get people in and out on that they've deadly a, corner. They've had a lot of issues yeah. where neighbor they're issues. located. Yeah, yeah. Um, neighbor, neighbor issues too. And they were kind of called there to look at leftover inventory. And then the oh, yeah. subject of the property came up and they said, well, we're kind of in a bind. And if you'll throw in everything that's left here for materials, we might buy the whole thing. And they said, absolutely. So it sounds That'd pretty good. Yeah. It sounds pretty prompt. And it, certainly that particular 
location is not going to have the congestion issue yeah. or the neighbor issue right that their current yeah. location does and it yeah. seems to me a lot of their business is catering to tourists yeah. so it really isn't going to have a big effect on the other restaurants or local you know i don't think they're going to draw a ton of tj's customers because it's a totally different clientele that they are yeah you know it's a lot of tourists that they're catering to sure. so um, to have something to draw them to Monmouth, I think would be great. And we should do everything we can to, to get them here. I'll make a point of reaching out to Reagan. Yep. Thank you. And we'll keep you in the loop as to yep. what she knows. Um, I want to uh, add that the boat launch on Annabeth Cook Lake is scheduled to open in the next week or two depending on how the contractor finishes up his project. So be looking for an announcement there. It's been a long time coming. We started in 2014 on that project. <laughs> long it takes. Time for <laughs> ice fishing, right? Just in time for ice fishing. Well, there's actually uh, parking for snowmobiling and access to the lake with a snowmobile trail. So ice fishing will be Part of the agenda. Great. Anything else? Uh, on to public comment. Anybody from the public who wants to comment? No. Okay. Uh, on to review and consider amendments to the Recreation Commission's bylaws. Yeah. Oh. I, uh, when I look through it, the only thing, I mean, if I was being picky or whatever, uh, there's some, uh, some, sometimes commission is misspelled with one S. <laughs> and also, we're officially now not select men, but select board. Well, this was now done in 2016, so, you know. Yes, sure. <laughs> And the only other thing, I mean, other than, oh, oh there was a section of uh, Article 5 officers. And it included it actually, and then that kind of uh, duties of officers is the next section, uh, six. And actually, it's a repeat. Like, uh, oh, okay. and I think maybe Article 5 could be officers and duties, and then just leave off. Uh, Article Six, which is a repeat, yep. and uh, yeah. then the other only other thing I could say is uh, that we need to, uh, or you need to, uh, uh, show that separate the uh, what goes on. Uh, in the in the land base activities that is up here at the school or the, the playgrounds or whatever and with what's going goes on at the waterfront like there should be like uh, uh something more specific to the waterfront well isn't that part of the what was on at the waterfront i believe is part of the length of the um package it's not the bylaws. It's never been part of the bylaws. It's in the um, uh, land usage. Uh, yes, that one's online. I think it's under the parks ordinance about the beach. It's the, about that. That's um, dated two thousand six, October, which. Uh, I mean, it's all covered under that. We were not tasked to go to review it, but we can if you guys want us to do that. That talks about, um, there's a definition of what the, what the uh, 
the park, what the park is, the, the policies, the properties, um, vehicles, parking, general conduct, and usage. Uh, actually, I think now that we have the pavilion, we probably do need to go read, you know, to revise some of that, but we can't do it without the authority. Uh, it is online. You can review your. Well, we can review it. Yes, and then bring it to us. But we're not going to do extra work just because one of it is what I'm saying. If we're asked to do it, that's why we do it. Well, I just know from my time on the library uh, trustee board, we had a had a schedule and we went through all of our um, documents on a schedule every so many years and made sure that they were still current and active and uh, relevant and made any changes that needed to be made. And those were, you know, that we did internally. Um, we didn't bring them before the board every time, but they were just, you know, rules governing the library about computer usage and well, things we, like we that. We read so. some on through them and thought, because I have a thing on here we need to modify, but we haven't done any modifications. And, you know, we've had changes in, the, in rec directors and one that did want to do stuff and so it's like you know game is board and we've also not had a full board for many years and, you know it's like that consistently attends the meetings but yeah i will um we have a meeting sunday so i will uh put that add it to the agenda that we need to review it because i know there are some you know we do need to modify as far as some of the usage down to beast because we have a policy for um usage of the pavilion and you know we've made the changes about um, use of the beach itself. So you can, um, I can definitely add that to it, and I can make those other changes for the check the spelling. That's our remote policy, which is the same thing. That's the remote remote participation policy. Did you see anything that you? No, I I, I didn't. <clears throat> I did know that it does talk about selectmen, change all of that. Yeah, everybody. Yeah. What do you mind if I clean it all up? Yeah. Uh, so where could we well, select at person? It. Select board. Just select board. Okay, I can change that. Would it be inappropriate to put uh, into the bylaws a provision that says there, there shall be a one week public notice of meetings? It's in here. It's in the bylaws. It's supposed to be two weeks, but our rec director is the only one who has access to do that. Well, I mean, what we didn't have access to do that on the um, library board either. We just emailed Lori and asked her to put it on the calendar, but we always met on the first Monday of the month. So well, that's what this you know, right? so, it says the second Sunday of the month, unless there's a change. And it's always been consistent. And it, he, uh, Joe was tasked to do that because he had access because the previous town manager said they didn't have time to do it, even though I would walk in and hand it Well, let's go back to town manager. I had to personally hand it in paper form to get it on the agenda, to get it on the calendar. But um, I reminded Joe, I think it's on there now because I reminded him to get it on there. It is on there. Yeah. And but, um, and is there a provision in the bylaws for the posting of minutes to the to the town website? Not in the, not in the bylaws. Not currently. No, we were only required to turn over minutes to the town manager. Would it be, would be would it be inappropriate to? I mean, it doesn't even have to be minutes. It could be just a, a YouTube video, right? Yeah, Which exactly. is similar to what we were yeah. doing here. Um, would it be inappropriate to? Put a put a provision that would require the posting of minutes of the meetings be posted to the website for public information. He's the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Counselor. <laughs> well, we're supposed to be open about all this exactly. stuff, right? We're supposed to um, do everything in the light of day and let everyone know. Well, I suppose it would be appropriate to 
Okay, so whose responsibility is to make sure that has, so it's a tape thing, because we have, I mean, Joe does bring his laptop, but we never, it's we never have, we seldom have guest visitors and it, he doesn't, I don't know if he doesn't know how or doesn't want to put it up on for the public to access, because I we had a hard time with, because we do have the remote, um, what's it called, the exact thing, we had to sign, for remote attendance, right. because like, you know, if I'm going to be out of town, you want to hold a meeting, you want to have a forum, I will in sure. online. Well, that makes sense. So it's an online policy, which everybody has. But that was just before Linda left yeah. had to do that. I think, but some, of course, we don't get minutes from the planning board uh, anymore. It's pretty sporadic if we ever do. Uh, and we don't get, uh, and I, I'm the secretary of the comes to trustees, and I uh, take the minutes, and, and so therefore uh, I'm supposed to give uh, email them to the town manager so that and I don't. Uh, <laughs> I forget. You're in um, big trouble. Uh, <laughs> okay, that's uh, and I don't know. Uh, the library um, puts them in a, a Google folder so that it's all in a Google folder that anybody can go in and access the minutes from from there. So I think oh, we, we did have that for a while on Google Forms because uh, Sue Cody was the secretary. Then she dropped out. And then we had another guy that did it. And then he dropped out and never gave me the last seven minutes. I keep my own handwritten stuff. Um, so let, our last meeting, Paul. Um, I think his name. He, Paul uh, Menace. Menace, yeah, he decided he would take minutes, but I haven't seen, you know. But he's not, I thought he was done. I thought his term had expired, so. Well, no, he hadn't been notified, and I said, we better go just check. That's usually previous um, Town managers would send like Linda tweets. I mean, hey, so and so, because of being as this, you know, the chairperson say, so and so's time is up. Do they want to stay? And I'm like, ask them. I'll like, take care of it. And I would call because the last one was Tom, and called and said, yeah, he wants to. Stay. No, he, no, we want. He wanted to leave, and then he changed his mind. So I did inform Paul. I said, I think yours is up, but I didn't know for sure nobody told us. So, so I, to, I would say as a chairperson, I mean. From the boards that I've been on, you need to know who's on and off and what their terms are. And that well, it, it was, used to be available to me. And they and they are the last town report we had. They were all right in there. And so, was the list from, well, it wasn't they were but they no, they were they yeah I closed it up because that's how I figured out that who was up and who wasn't up and Paul Menaces was up so. If he's voting or anything like that, he hasn't been, you know, yeah, we don't, approved we by only had We've only had one meeting since we had the one in September. We didn't meet in July and August. Yeah. Um, so we hadn't voted on anything, so we're safe. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> so voted on so he needs to fill out a form, I believe, to, yeah. you know, be appointed back onto the committee. So I think we had... You know, I just used my information from the library trustee and we had all in the front of our binder, you know, whose terms were A, B, C, and D because you have like a revolving group, you know, two, two, and one, and you knew A, B, and C, what their terms were and when their terms expired. So that needs to uh, be- Yeah, and I think it was kind of hard when- They'd quit in between. In, 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 did somebody fill up? I mean, we've had people, it's like a revolving door. I mean, Tom and Paul and I are the only ones that have been there for like forever. We've had a lot of changes with it. But I will, I'll, I'll get that information from the town about the one and ask them. Because the same thing with the financial, we're supposed to have a financial person, but we could never get financial information from whoever. I forget who's in charge now because every time you, I go, I would go in and ask for it when I was secretary at the time and would get it but it's been years since anybody's there i didn't even know who's who has it to give us where we can follow our budget to make sure because we don't we don't expend a lot of money during the course of the year. it's mostly during the summer and then soccer season then when there's nothing 
in there. So I mean, none of that is that. Is this that information or whatever her name was? Oh, she's not here. She can't. Can you print it out and put it in the mailbox? Send it to me. And I never get it. And then it's like, how many trips do I have to make to the office to get it? I was working, so it was kind of hard. But um, so that's something, a lack of communication that we've got to find for that. Make sure we, we know uh, the lady who, who did the, our bookkeeping, Angela, is gone. And uh, so therefore, We've hired a, a firm uh, that, that takes care of our all the bookkeeping. And uh, I don't know how, I know when it comes to trustees, we, we, I think Dennis will give us uh, an update on what's been spent. Um, and, but, uh, it, <laughs> I don't know. I, maybe we're not. Uh, maybe we're not. Google. But, uh, we. When Kurt Lott was our town manager, he would uh, quarterly. He would give us a, a financial report, right. and it was really a lot of. Uh, and we'd go through it very quickly, and he would point out where we were as far as expenditures. Right. And, and, and I used, we used to get one of those too. With just the one large, it was just the one sheet of, yeah. of what what was in there in the budget, what what we had spent, what and Lori used to give it to us. But then you know, well, everything everybody's jobs changes, so yes. And with Linda, I I don't remember if she ever did. I don't think she ever did it. I uh, know that one the, with the library, Julie would get a report, and we'd go through it and see where we were in accordance to where we were in the fiscal year. So um, I'm sure that. Having a CPA firm doing our books now, <laughs> and we'll be able to ask them for that information, and they should be able to. Yeah, because it's really important during the summer to make sure that our lifeguard line is staying within the budget. Because we yes. had, depending on the season, like we budget so much, and then you don't know. I mean, because we do our budget in December, we don't know who's coming back, who's not. We kind of estimate and guess on it. Then do we have the hot summer? We got to have more people on, and then you know, we're going back to the having the um, beach thing. So we have to hire more, you know, we have to have more guards on duty that time, that day. So that goes into the overtime piece. And so that's that's the real important time. The other times of the years, it's minor things because we, um, like we'll buy goals for soccer, we'll buy t-shirts for the basketball season. But the bulk of our money is spent during the summer programs, except for now with this building, we added, it'll be different, but, um, we don't know yet on that until I sit down. I had that go. We used to get appropriation. I've got it. Um, you know, they're very helpful to you know, our budget status. You mean you used to get it when? You know, all the time. Uh, like once a month, you want them? At least once a month, yeah. not every two weeks. And certainly I could request it. And there's a girl there that could do it. You know? um, we don't have that luxury anymore. Well, I don't know with the new new firm because mm -hmm. they did make the last. Uh, yeah, and, and that was brought up at the last meeting, and they're going to start doing it bi-weekly. Okay, okay. It's just it was just a matter of them getting the figures together from the past and loading it into their system so that they can go forward now that they transition. So you guys, your department heads will get just updates every two weeks. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you know it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. They improve it. Because yeah. we don't like again, we're we're supposed to be watching that stuff. Yeah. And uh we're not getting paperwork uh hang to look at. There's a lot of things. There's a disconnect going on and I don't know what it is. Lack of communication, lack of staff, and transitioning of jobs, whatever it is that we need to get some things ironed out. Yeah, um, back to the Bible so we can address mm -hmm. this. So, yeah, so um, what? So, you want me to? So, my understanding is make Article 5 offices and the duties and take out six. I worry. Yeah. Just, I mean, just push it together. Check the spelling for commission. Let me ask you about this. You have authority over the waterfront as well, right? Um, yes. So 
If you look at section nine, article nine, section one, it says supervised facilities, public park. Should we add waterfront and well, make and they make call that the water? They, they, it's, so we we refer to it as a waterfront, but actually, I think technically, the science says mom is. And, but there's no reference made to the separate uh, separate ordinance or whatever it is pertaining to the waterfront. It, I think you said it was 2006. Uh -huh. You shouldn't there be a reference somewhere so Probably. so people can find it. They look online and they could find that there's another separate ordinance dealing with the waterfront. I wonder. Can you you think you can fit it into? Article nine, section one. Yep. We can do that. And and so then everyone will be aware there's another there's another you want me to reference it or is that what you're saying? Or mention how would you like to just a separate reference, right? Yeah. So what what would the proposed language be, counselor? <laughs> okay, let's um the Commission shall have the responsibility to acquire, approve, and supervise facilities for public for public park, including the waterfront. Okay. And then in, you could put in parentheses uh, the 2006 ordinance, so that they know that that's part of part of your um, part of the purview of right. what you're supposed to be doing. Okay. this after I make the corrections. Uh, yeah, because it should actually it, it, it really should be uh, available on on our recreation page or, or on the town page yeah. where they have all the stuff because yeah. it's not but it, all this stuff should be available. Yeah, yeah. just a link to the bio. It's not there. Yeah, no, I, uh -huh. I don't see the ordinance on here. Well, the ordinance used to be on there, so it's been moved around, I think, because it used to be because that's how I got the original copy back in 2000, whatever, um, because that's how we, when we start looking at rules and regulations, things we want to change, like the use of the beach and that, is I go to all the surrounding towns and check what they, and they'll list information on the recreation website. I mean, our recreation website doesn't really have much on it. Hopefully that'll change, but we've got some, a rec director that works full time, so he doesn't, you know, doesn't take the time, doesn't have the time to put all that stuff in there. And I don't know. I mean, unless it gives me less retirees some access to it, we can do it. If you still had basketball information from last December, I've been on this case about King Bay. Yeah, I'm just okay, so if I make these changes and just send it to you, you want me back again at the oh, yeah, that would be yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Yes. Oh, I'd just like to thank them for the hard work they're doing. Oh, yeah. I appreciate them. Thank you. Thank you. No money. Yeah. <laughs> oh, free. Yeah. yeah, it's very much appreciated. Okay, on to uh, consider the uh, sale of an all public works plow truck. Yes, uh, we had three bids. I don't know if Justin gave you a summary of the bids. So yeah. We had three bids for the truck. The highest bid uh, was $4,000 even from AW Bachelor and Sons out of Leeds. Uh, the next bid was for $3,752 and 51 cents uh, from Jeff Kemp. And then the final bid was $2,752 uh, from a Dennis Samard out of Lisbon. Um, we opened the bids at the specified time and date, read them aloud. There was nobody present. It was just myself and Lori Walker. 
Um, the next day, just due to my schedule that day, I called um, Aaron Boucher to let him know he was the high bidder uh, at 4,000. And he said he was interested in finalizing the transaction. I told him I'd bring it to the select board at the next meeting. Those are the three bids. And I make a motion that we accept the proposal from uh, AW Bachelor and Sons for four thousand dollars for uh, for the used plow truck owned by the town. Second. So the motion by Ken, second by Kristen to uh, accept the bid from AW Bachelor and Son for four thousand dollars for the sale of the old. Works plow truck. All those in favor. Thank you. Uh, next is to consider an application for a catering permit for Comston Hall. And it and is there. Yeah. yeah. It's um pushed up brewing. And it is for the event stand up for Comston. It's a fundraiser for the Friends of Comston Hall. And it's scheduled for um this. Saturday the 8th uh, from 6 to 10 and this um, obviously Dennis uh, is the requesting party and number of people attending is 100 and so it's what we discussed as involved trustees um, they'll have a table set up for um, a bar for beer and wine sales before the curtain goes up and at intermission. And there will be no dancing. <laughs> <laughs> just it says that. Will dancing be part of the event? So, you know, for footloose you know. yeah, so uh, purposes. But if there were dancing, oh, would that be good for you? on the other side of the tracks. <laughs> <laughs> That's a footloose reference. Apparently, you need a, da a dance license. <laughs> <laughs> is that too bad? It says you need a copy of the license from the fire marshal's fire office marshal. if you're going to be dancing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> only for the mosh pit. So. <laughs> okay. You know about this. I'm going to go down with the Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we accept the application for a catering permit from Krishnott Brewing for Cumston Hall this weekend. I'll uh, second that. Oh, that's <laughs> So, <laughs> motion by Chad, second by Joe to uh, allow or to accept the catering permit for Cumston Hall for this Saturday. Uh, all those in favor. Thank you. Next is uh, fiscal year 2023 warrant number seven. So items over a thousand dollars, allied equipment for vehicle repairs and maintenance, $6,446. Androscoggin Bank is debt service, principal and interest. Not sure if say what this is for, but I assume it's for one of the paving projects. I $27,153.93. Uh, Bernstein, Schur, and Sawyer and Nelson legal fees, $1,041.66. Calderwood Engineering, um, that is for Cumston Hall, Cottonwagon Dam, uh, $4,528.57. CMP $1,591.76. Havasi County Lake Association for Milk Oil Inspections, $4,000. Creative Digital Postage for Tax Bills, $1,222.59. Dennis K. Burke Gas and Oil, $1,610.40. Friends of Cobbesey Watershed, this is for Cotton Wagon and Anna Bessa Cook Mill Foil Inspections, $6,500. Main Commercial Tire, this, Vehicle Repairs and Maintenance, $17,152.90. Main Equalization Consultants, Other Contracted Services. I don't know what that is, but. $2,287.50. Uh, 
um, Maine Municipal Association for Workman's Comp, $8,318.25. MMEHT, so that must be Maine, Maine Employees Health Insurance Trust, $17,876.35. Monmouth Water Association for Hydrants, $29,201. St. Laurent and Sons, $1,213. Bureau of Motor Vehicles, $20,732.23. Uh, Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, $1,777.50. And that's it. Make a motion we approve fiscal year. 2023 warrant number seven. Second. Approve warrant number seven for 2023. All those in favor. Thank you. And I make a motion we adjourn. Second. <laughs> so yeah. We're going to take a tour of the cruiser. Yeah, let's go check it out. The cruiser, let me. Yeah.